the story starts back in 1980. I was watching TV that night. Channel 9, of course. The educational channel, which all good letter carriers and salespeople watch, right? <laughs> And they were having their semi-annual fundraisers. Send us your money! We want your money! And they had a speaker on there who was sort of shabbily dressed. He was perspiring, wiping it off. He was taking his coat off. And he certainly didn't look like a professional speaker. And yet he had an intensity and excitement about him that really got me going. He had the audience in the palm of his hand. That was my first experience with... Felice Leonardo Buscaglia, usually mispronounced as Dr. Buscaglia or even Dr. Boxcar or Call the Love Doctor, but usually he prefers just plain old Leo. How many people know about Leo just right off the bat? We got a few people, maybe, maybe not quite 50%. Well, Leo has put out a number of books here I brought along. Love, The Way of the Bull, Personhood, Living, Loving, and Learning, Birdie the Leaf, Bus Nine to Paradise. They're sort of human quality books, but they might help you in your sales relating to other people. He is constantly on Channel 9 whenever they need money. He's on Phil Donahue. He's on every talk show in the world. I know you're out there making a buck. That's why you're not watching him on TV, right? <laughs> After I had watched Leo a number of times, I decided to write him. But I didn't have an address. So, it just so happened a couple weeks after that, I found out that Leo was going to be talking at SIU. And I started to write a letter to him. I told him that basically I was concerned about his health because the message that he was preaching was love and caring and opening yourself up to all sorts of possibilities. But he was intense. He was very serious about it and he wasn't smiling at all. And the message didn't seem to jive with the way he was saying it. So I sent him that letter in care of the college, hoping they would pass it along to him and that somehow I could communicate with him. Needless to say, I did get some tickets to go over to Illinois that night with some friends of mine. And it was a terrible, terrible night. I mean, it was rain, it was cold. You figure no one's going to go out on a night like this to go to a gymnasium to hear a professor speak, but boy was I wrong. That place was packed with people. You couldn't get another person in if you had to. Of course, I kept wondering in the back of my mind, I said, I wonder if Leo got my message. I kept waiting for that announcement. Somebody would come up to the lectern and say, Mr. Kowska, Mr. Boscalia wants to speak to you, please. No such luck. I did have an insight, though, at that first speech that was to hold over until his last speech, and that Leo is a beautiful, loving, caring, open person. But then so am I, so are all my friends, and I bet so are you too. Why then are thousands and thousands of people making such a big deal over Leo Boscalia? Well, the answer is, Leo is loved because he says it so well. While we struggle to share a few basic ideas back and forth, Leo consistently opens up his heart and talks as if he's got a message directly from God. Two weeks after the speech, I received from the God bless him, United States Postal Service, <laughs> a handwritten letter from Leo Buscaglia. Of course, I was ecstatic. I was jumping for joy. I, I finally got an answer. I got on the phone and I called on my friends and said, Listen, guess what I got today? A letter from Leo Boscalia. Yeah, I did. It's right here. I did this for about a dozen people. And I got the letter and I put it up on the refrigerator, you know, sort of like a trophy deer on a wall. I kept it there for six months so people would have to see it as they came in the house. And what's so mind-boggling is can you imagine... What are the odds of receiving a personal, handwritten letter from a famous personality? I mean, how many handwritten letters does Nixie Cook have from Dave Thompson? Huh? <laughs> Not too many, I bet. <laughs> or how many does Mark Willick have from his love, Sybil Shepherd? <laughs> I was told to say that, Mark. <laughs> we'll get his. <laughs> Well, for me, it was like winning the Illinois lottery that day. I had all of the six winning numbers. 
His letter went like this. Here's the letter. It said, Dear Tom, thank you for the beautiful, loving letter. No, nothing is wrong. I was a bit tired, that's all. Each day seems to offer more and more challenge, and I know that something must give. Since it's all good, I must figure out how to arrange priorities. That's all truly. But the love is to care, and I'm pleased you shared so completely. Thank your friends and you. I send along my love, a hug, and a wish that we shall someday touch, not so much from need as from wanting to grow, and each other's love warmly, Leo. It wasn't much later that I wrote back again. I wrote the letter July 8th. I got a reply back July 25th. One of the things that makes Leo so unique is that he not only does a great speech, he not only appears great at the lectern, but he believes what he's talking about. He takes the time out to write personal letters to people who write to him. He also proves it by, after each speech, he goes out and he hugs everyone in the audience that wants a hug. Now we're just not talking 10, 20, or 30 people. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of people, two, three, four hours after each speech. He is surrounded hugging people. I'm, it must be exhausting but exhilarating at the same time. By the way, when was the last time you wrote a personal handwritten letter to one of your customers? Just a thought. Now, at some point, I learned that Leo was going to do a speech for Channel 9 the Keel Opera House, and of course my brain immediately jumped into action. It said, what can I do to get Leo to come to my house? 4108 Exeter. Well, my, my wife and I came up with the idea of a super spectacular dinner. Leo loves to oink out, he loves to eat. <laughs> and so we came out with a special Dine a la Buscali, a special dinner just for him, and we sent him this invitation broccoli quiche appetizer, Caesar salad, veal orloff, twice baked potatoes, home baked bread, pouf say wine, chocolate cheesecakes, fruit, and assorted cheeses. How can anyone turn that down? September 5th, 1980, I received a reply from Leo regarding the dinner and it went like this. It says, Dear Tom, thank you for the dinner invitation in February. But whenever I speak, I'm always at the mercy of the sponsoring organization, and they invariably have me scheduled from the moment I get off the plane until I get back on. It's a kind offer anyway, and I appreciate your thoughtfulness. Warmly, Leo. Well, I was discouraged and disheartened because I knew when I sent the letter that Leo must get hundreds of letters just like this. But I was half expecting that reply, and I had an answer for him. Because I knew that Leo was saying no, and that's not part of Leo's philosophy. So the next day I sent Leo this letter. I said, Leo, I know this is your rational, logical answer that you've had to give hundreds of times to invitations just like this. But that instead, look at the possibility, look inside your heart, don't say no, say maybe. A few days later, I got this reply from Leo. Dear Tom, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not in marketing, but I know how to make a sale when I have to, and the salesman and me jumped a dozen steps forward and says, I can do it. Since Channel 9 was sponsoring Leo, I decided to cover all my bases with them. I had a woman on my route, Donna Charon, who worked for Channel 9 at the time, and I started talking to her. What can I do? I talked to all of her contacts down at Channel 9. I ended up joining good old Channel 9 just to prove <laughs> what a tight and little fan I was. Of course, I worked on the, the phones when Leo was talking. I even volunteered to do what, whatever was necessary to help them out. Could I pick him up at the airport? Could I take him back? What can I do? to help Channel 9, right? <laughs> or, in your case, what can I do to help you, the customer? Channel 9 also sponsored a $50 a person dinner for the night before the speech, which I could have gone to, but I was inclined to hold out for a more private get-together. I didn't want to share a Leo with a couple of hundred other people who would all be clamoring for his attention. 
course, I was also letting my friends know, just a small group, that I was trying to get Leo to my house, but always hedging my statements with the thought, well, you know, I'm trying, but I can't, I can't count on it, but we're gonna give it our best shot. Now, during the two months before Leo's actual visit, I started a media blitz that Madison Avenue executives would be proud of. I sent him pig stamps for oinking out, poetry, cookies, anything to keep him cognizant of Tom Krauska, mailman philosopher, St. Louis, Missouri. He couldn't forget me. I even got back a couple of replies. I said, Tom, your package of goodies arrived today just at the moment when I needed them most. I shared them with those I love in the office. We all agree that you are a very special cook, or someone is, and are willing to share. This is a sample of what I have to look forward to in St. Louis. I'll stop eating now in anticipation. Dear Tom, after a most fantastic holiday, the stamp you sent looks just like me. That's the pig stamp. <laughs> How did you know? Thank you for thinking of me. I love the poem. See you in St. Louis for that promised hug, warmly Leo. As the fateful day grew closer, I found another woman would be picking up Leo at the airport, but they said I could return him there. So of course I was excited about that, but I was still hoping that maybe I could get him over to my house some way. So I talked to Donna Sharon, the gal from Channel 9, and I told her what I was trying to do, and her response was sort of natural. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You want him to come where? Your house? Oh my, the mailman? Oh, get out of here. That'll never happen in a million years. We've got him going 100 miles an hour. There is no way he's going to come and visit you. Well, of course, I was disappointed with her response, but I wasn't about to give up. Now, four days before Leo would be speaking in St. Louis, I sent him this telegram. It said, Dear Leo, my God, I'm excited how happy I'll be when you walk through the door to oink out with me. <laughs> the dinner's all planned, the wine that is chilling, the veal and the cheesecake will make the night thrilling. Right now I am planning to serve this royal feast with love and caring right after your speech. And if that's a problem or another time's better, just call me collect. No time left for a letter. <laughs> February 5th, Leo came into town. I had worked all day, came home about 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Ring, ring. Hello? Oh, Tom? This is Leo. Hi, Leo. Good to hear from you. This is great. I didn't expect a phone call. I said, yeah, I was wondering if there was a time we could get together. He said, you know, right after that dinner tonight, maybe we could, I could come over to your house. I said, Leo, that'd be fantastic. If you could really work it out, I'd appreciate it. Give me a call when you're through. We'll get you over there. Of course, I was excited about all of this. You know, Leo Biscaglia might come to my house. But you got to consider, 200 people each had paid $50 to see Leo Biscaglia. What are the odds that they're going to let him out of that room alive? It's, it's still, we're still talking 50-50. I immediately called four friends of mine. I said, stand by your phones. Don't plan anything tonight. Tonight might be the night. Be ready if he could come over. Well, about 9.30 that night, I got a call from Leo asking if this would be a good time to come over. I said, Leo, this is a fantastic time. Come on over right now. Well, I can't believe it, but 10 o'clock that night, Leo came over to the door, chauffeured, by the way, by Donna Sharon, the gal who put me down, <laughs> and gave each of us one of the strongest and lovingest hugs in all of our memory. The next couple hours were quiet and mellow, and we sat around and talked and ate cheesecake and wine and talked and talked and talked. <coughs> For those of you who have seen Leo speak, well, he is dynamic as a speaker, He's very quiet and soft-spoken when he's in a room by himself, but he's always talking from his heart. He's always sincere. He always means what he says. And that weekend was certainly a magical time for me because I took him back to the motel that night. I saw him speak the next day. And I took him back to the airport the day after that for a waiting Learjet because he had another speech the following night. Now, in conclusion, the main point I'd like to tell you or leave with you is that if you need to make a sale, 
that's for Abbott Diagnostics, it's for me trying to sell myself to Leo Boscalia, even if the odds are a million to one, you can do it, but you gotta take persistence, hard work, and commitment to your goal. The next time you need that miracle or a friend or you gotta make that sale, don't give up, don't quit, don't say no, say maybe. Thank you, Thank you.